Hello, welcome to this video tutorial on Oracle's case splice technology. This tutorial will demonstrate using Oracle's Unbreakable Linux Network web interface to subscribe to the case splice channel, using the yum utility to install the case splice uptrack software package, using the uptrack utility to install case splice kernel updates, and also the use of the case splice web interface. For this tutorial, I'm using a virtual machine in Oracle VM VirtualBox. I have Oracle Linux 7 installed on this virtual machine. I'm currently logged in as the root user. And the system is also registered with ULN. If I type in yum repo list, it says the system is receiving updates from ULN. Refer to the ULN video tutorial for a demonstration of registering a system with ULN. You can also see that this system is sub subscribed to two channels, the Unbreakable Enterprise Kernel Release 3 for Oracle Linux 7 and also the Oracle Linux 7 Latest channel. I'm already logged on to ULN. I'll open up my browser window here. And you'll see that I have a system that's registered. It's called uln-video-demo. I'll click on my system name to manage my subscriptions. So down here in the middle, you can see that uh, I'm currently subscribed to two channels, the UEK Release 3 for Oracle Set Linux 7 and also Oracle Linux 7 Latest. I'm going to click Manage Subscriptions. and you can see that I have some available channels here, one of which is Casepliece. So I'm going to subscribe to this Casepliece channel by selecting it here as an available channel. Click the arrow key to move it over to my subscribe channels and click Save Subscriptions. And it will tell you up here at the top that the subscriptions are saved. So now I'm going to click Channels and this is a list of all my channels, but I just want to see the channels for Oracle Linux 7. So I'll select Oracle Linux 7 from the drop-down box. And you can see here that the Case Splice channel has 20 packages. So I'll click on this package link. You'll see the available packages for this channel. One of the packages here is a client for Casebliss Uptrack Rebootless Kernel Update Service. This Uptrack here, version 1.2.20-0. So this package needs to be installed. And now that I'm subscribed to this channel, I can install this package just using a yum command. So I'm going to minimize my browser window. Now I'm back to my terminal window and if I run yum repo list again you'll see that I now have three channels that I'm subscribed to. The case splice channel is, has been added. So I can install that uptrack package just by saying yum install uptrack. So this goes through a little effort to find the dependencies and it's going to install the uptrack package but it's also going to th install three dependent packages. So I'm just going to click yes. So you can see that the package was installed as well as the three dependent packages. I'm going to open up my web interface again to the ULN. And I also want to point out some other packages here. There's all of these rebootless updates for Casebliss Uptrack Rebootless Kernel Update Service. So there's all these packages here for different versions of the kernel. There's some 3.10.0.123 versions. There's some 
3.8.13-35 versions. There's also some 3.8.13-44 versions. I'm going to minimize this again, this window, and run a command u name minus r. This tells me the version of the kernel that I'm currently running. And it's 3.8.13-44.1.1. And if I open up the web interface again, you'll see that I do have rebootless updates for this kernel. 3.8.13-44.1.1. Next I'm going to access the KSplice web interface. I'm going to open up a new window on my browser. URL is https colon slash slash uptrack dot ksplice dot com. So the, the Oracle Ksplice system status window appears. It says this interface is now using Oracle single sign on accounts for authentication. And I have a single sign on account, so I'm going to click I am ready to log in with my Oracle SSO account. So I enter my uh, username and password. Click sign in. Now I have, you'll see on this screen, your email is associated with multiple case splice accounts. This probably won't be the case for you, but I do have a couple uh, couple of counts so I need to select one. I'm going to select this one down here and hit submit. The system status window appears. The access key is blacked out for this example. But you can see I have one active machine is out of date and this is my machine down here. Uh, I have zero installed and there's one update available. Auto update is set to no. This is a configuration parameter in the uptrack.com file. If you set this directive to yes, then KSplice will automatically download and install the updates using a cron job. It gives you the kernel product, UEK3, the original kernel, the effective kernel, and the uh, version of the uptrack package that we installed. There's a couple links down here installations instructions and removal instructions. You can also set up groups. You can uh, create a group and then put machines into different groups just for management purposes. So I'm going to go ahead and click the link to my system here. And now it gives you the status window and you can see here that there is one available update and no updates have been installed. There's some information here on the left also. host name, IP address, last reported, the version, whether auto install is set to be on, kernel, information about the kernel, those type of things. You can deny a machine from from receiving updates. Currently it's set to allow updates. So it says there's one update available. I'm going to bring up the terminal window and clear my screen here and I'm going to run some uptrack commands. If I run uptrack show it says there were no updates installed and that corresponds with what's shown here on the web page. No updates installed. If I run the same command with the dash dash available flag, it tells me that there is an available update, which again corresponds with what's on the web page. To install that update, I run uptrack upgrade, 
and I can use a minus Y to, to go ahead and apply that upgrade immediately. So it tells me it's going to install this remote Denov service uh, CVE and it's installing it right now. It's done. It did not in, it did not change my effective kernel. Um, I'll show you that my original kernel version and my effective kernel version is still the same, but that's because there was only one update. If there was multiple updates that were applied, then the effective kernel would be would be updated as well. If I minimize this now, and if I refresh my screen. Now it says there are no updates available and then one update has been installed. I go back to list my machines. It gives me the same information here. My system is up to date. One has been installed. I'll open up my terminal window again and clear my screen. If I run the uptrack show available, it says there are none available. If I run uptrack show, it shows me that there's one that one has been installed. If I show the kernel version with the uname minus R, this is the original kernel version. If I run the uptrack uname minus R command, this is the effective kernel version. Again, if there was a lot of updates applied, the effective kernel version would have uh, incremented as well. You can remove updates. If I do uptrack remove, notice it says please specify an ID or use the dash dash all argument to remove everything. So if I want to remove that specific update, I would have to include the ID, which in this case was CWY849XP. And then you're prompted if you uh, want to go ahead. And I'm just going to say no. So this concludes the demonstration of case splice. It's a method of allowing you to apply updates to kernel without having to reboot. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video.